Hey, Alton Brown here in the uh, now almost completely deserted Good Eats uh, test kitchen. Hey, they closed all the schools, so all those kids are home, so you're going to need some cookies, right? Just to keep them quiet, you know? Come on. So this is kind of a good news, bad news cookie. Uh, the good news is um, incredibly simple, made with very few ingredients that you probably have sitting in your pantry right now. Also good news, gluten free, all right? There's no flour in this. I'm not, I don't really care about that, but I know that a lot of people do. The bad news is um, if you're allergic to peanuts, and I know a lot of kids like uh, my daughter are, well, you can't have these, but I'm not allergic to peanut butter or peanuts. So that means I can eat more of these. And there's the good news, although that's just going to make me fat. So that's bad. Okay, let's just make cookies. So um, I have uh, peanut butter, 268 grams, smooth peanut butter. It's just Jif, okay? Nothing special. It's just... Somebody will pick that up. Um, I also have two different sugars, light brown sugar and regular granulated sugar, 120 grams of each. That would basically be half a cup of each, but of course the uh, brown sugar would be packed. And I really don't like measuring that way because one person's packed is another person's semi-unpacked. So let's just go 120 grams. I have one egg. We're also going to use one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. I arrange things uh, very often from the uh, higher amount to the lower amount because it helps me to memorize the recipes, which I like to do. So 268, 120, one, 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 one quarter. Great, all right, now the uh, oven I have set to uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, we could do that in metric, but I'm still I'm not thinking that way yet. So let's just say 350, rack is in the middle. The only tools that we're going to need, bowl for mixing and uh, some mixing utensils. Uh, we're gonna go old school with just the, uh, the wooden spoon. And uh, uh, I'm also gonna use a, a disher. Uh, to distribute these. Uh, I want one ounce uh, portions. I'm going to weigh them and see if I hit one ounce, but having a disher is going to make that a lot uh, easier. And I've got a little spatula because this stuff is sticky and you need a spatula when stuff is sticky. So uh, the first thing that uh, we're going to do, peanut butter goes in first. Please don't make any jokes about how that looks. There we go. <laughs> uh, the sugar, both sugars go in and then just uh, kind of work this around. I suggest you make children, oh, that's bad. Um, my suggestion is you make children do this. Um, and I would say that, you know, it's all about uh, teaching them to value things and that if you want the cookie, you ought to have to make the cookie. But really it's just about making them do work so that you can go off and do something else. Like the good old days when we made children to do work around the farm. Same thing, now that they're home um, and in your face, all day long, all day long, um, they should have to do something. Now here, I'm gonna scrape off my uh, spoon. See, you always need a spatula. You always need a little rubber spatula. And I'm gonna work this now, which is kind of with the back of the spoon. And uh, this is almost like imitating the creaming method where you're uh, kind of punching holes in the peanut butter. There, because I'm gonna make a hole for the egg. Uh, now's a good time to also add the baking soda. This is not baking powder. This is baking soda, one teaspoon. Go. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Don't do that over the bowl just in case you spill it. There we go. Last thing is the salt. We're only going to go with a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and stir to combine. And we want this really smooth. Let's just fast forward through this part. And that is what your dough should look like. Um, at this point, this could uh, be refrigerated for, uh, you know what, who cares? We would make cookies right away, wouldn't we? Um, to do so, we're gonna need uh, two cookie uh, pans or two uh, sheet pans. Uh, these are half sheet pans. Uh, we use a lot of these uh, here in, uh, in the Good Eats Test Kitchen because um, we like them and they're cheap and they're aluminum. Uh, so we're gonna put um, only eight cookies on each of these because there is a fair amount of spread. And as I said, I have a, a one ounce uh, by volume uh, disher, which is wrong. That's one ounce by volume. This is heavier. I'm just now remembering when I wrote this recipe. So I'm gonna switch that out. Yeah, this will be better. This is a one and a half tablespoon, which should be about an ounce by weight. Let's see if that works out. So um, all I'm gonna do is uh, dose these out. Uh, 
try to get the spacing right. One, two, three. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but these things do spread and I wanna give them uh, room uh, to do so. We'll see if I've got this dosed properly. Let's just fast forward through this part. Wow, well, that pretty much worked out. I'll lick this out when you're not watching. Okay, now time to uh, give these uh, cookies their distinctive uh, look. And for that, we need a fork. Uh, let's see, I've got a few choices here. Uh, the tine marks are gonna matter. So you know what, I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with uh, this one because it has narrower uh, tines with a little more space, make a nicer texture on the, uh, the cookie. So I'm just gonna start over here and mash down and then kind of swipe like that. I'm gonna do them all in one direction and then I'll come back and do them in the other direction. Now, I don't mind them being a little on the rustic side. Um, if you want yours to be perfectly smooth, then you could take the balls and make them all perfect and pretty uh, before you mash the cookies. I don't really care about that kind of thing, so I'm not going to. I like mine to look a little sloppy. Now notice, I'm not just picking up the fork. That would make a mess. I'm kind of sliding it, all right? Um, you shouldn't need to use any flour or anything like this, like that, rather, uh, if you do this properly. I know some folks like to bake on those uh, silicone mats or silpats as we call them. I don't like those uh, for these cookies. I think they spread too much. So go with parchment paper, which uh, is not the same as wax paper. Don't use the wax paper. That'll be like making crayons. That's very different. Okay, now I'm going the other way with the fork to make the famous crosshatch peanut butter cookie pattern that uh, has been famous for pretty much ever. Ultimately, you're looking for a diameter of a I'd say that one's just about perfect. So it's about um, just at two and a half inches across. Metal ruler in the kitchen, very, very valuable. Because especially if like somebody reaches for a, a cookie when it's not ready yet, pop them with it. Okay. Again, not picking up, sliding. All right, into the 350 degree oven. Um, I wanna shoot for the middle of the box. Uh, these will not fit two to a rack. So I'm gonna put one on the top middle and one on the lower middle, if that makes any sense. Ah go right in the middle as quickly as possible so we don't let any of the heat out any more than we need to and I'm going to set my timer for a mere 10 minutes that's all it's going to take okay sliding them off the pan that early might be a mistake I think I'll let these cool for a second on the rack before I slide them off. Those are, well, those are gonna go to the bad children. Simply allow the uh, cookies to cool on uh, the parchment on top of cooling racks for efficiency uh, for about 10 minutes before devouring. Wow, that's a darn fine cookie. And it doesn't have any gluten in it. And it's got almost no ingredients in it. And you've probably already got this stuff um, already in the uh, pantry. I'll just save this uh, for later. Um, as for all of these, let's just say now, I can control all the children. <laughs> Not coughing.